inclusion, a conceptual approach. I would like to ask you to uh, what do you think is inclusion? Who can help me to define that? What do you think it's? Can you help me? You have an idea what it means uh, inclusion? If you want, you can separate E, electronic, inclusion. In what does it mean? When you think about that, what uh, came to your mind? Inclusion also means to Only translation. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell me something? What are you? Are you shy? <laughs> you have to help me because uh, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> Okay, if you don't want to help me, I would tell to you. Uh, inclusion, uh, I took four definitions, or five definitions to, to show you about this uh, concept. But after that we will, if you don't want to do right now, before the, I def to define that, you will help me after I did a concept. Okay, I, I tell you. According to the European Union, uh, they say that E inclusion uh, aims to achieve that no one left is left behind. When it, they say no one, uh, it's, uh, it means that everybody can be included in the benefits of the uh, information society. Another um, concept it is uh, inclusion in this uh, overcoming social and geographical differences ensuring an inclusive uh, digital society that provides opportunities for all that's uh, basically what it means. Well, and a new concept. You can see the words which are highlighted is about the, to remove obstacles or barriers, people participation in the economy, um, overcome barriers uh, to the ICE information and communication technology, participatory uh, democracies, better quality of life, and enhance uh, opportunities for employment and education. So there are three concepts. Anyone? It's related also with the participation of individuals and all communities in all dimensions that uh, knowledge of the knowledge uh, base is associated. And again, to remove to removal of access and accessibility barriers. So I want to notice something in the in the following definition. You can see here is digital inclusion. Maybe you think it could be something different than the uh, inclusion, but no, it's the same thing. But what happens? Digital inclusion is the term that uh, is uh, more used in the countries like, uh, in the countries like uh, US, um, Canada, even uh, Australia and others. But inclusion is a term that it's more often used here in Europe, mostly in the European Union and all European countries. But if you read, it's the same thing. It doesn't, mean, it, it doesn't have any difference. But according to uh, information Policy and Access Center of University of Maryland in the US, they define uh, digital inclusion or e-inclusion as uh, policies, programs and action developed to close the digital divide, promote the digital literacy and ensure equitable access to increasingly digital environment. Well, more or less, it's the same. So, we can, well, uh, we can conclude about uh, this concept. In other words, the concept of inclusion outlined clearly some important issues. First one, compulsory presence of ICT. Without ICT, we can't include anybody because it's e-inclusion, e electronic inclusion. So we need compulsory ICT. Uh, which kind of ICT, for example, are necessary to include the, the population? To everybody, can you tell me what do we need to include people according to ICT? We need broadband internet. I, 
classes of thing, internet, because without internet we cannot include, but also hardware and software, of course. But internet is the most important thing to, one of the most important things to include people. And you need something on which you can see the content of internet. You need some hardware to see phone or computer. Phone, computer, yeah. But uh, to include people, firstly, uh, first of all, you have to to have the equipment, right? Because it's e inclusion, electronic inclusion, it's said for itself. And the ICT is the most common use is computer, um, mo mobile phones, uh, and the program, of course. And internet is very important. Full participation of everyone. Everyone has to be included. And when we say everyone, which which kind of group do you think that are more fixed to be in uh, info excluded? If you have to think about any group, which people came? Uh, Other you think? people. Hmm? Other people? Information. Beautiful, very good. Sorry? Information specialist? Information? Specialist? Yes. That is a, a group, but normally they are not excluded because the information specialist they have they, they have to be in contact in touch with the uh, technologies so but also they are included as well who which other group for example <coughs> elder people poor people oh, yes people who has less uh, resources or incomes to to access to the benefit of internet of uh, information society who uh, all else? People living in rural areas. Rural areas, yeah. Which more? Politics. Sorry? Politics. Politics, mm, <laughs> yes, but normally they have <laughs> to <laughs> They have to, to learn how to use, but even then they have, mm, they are included, more or less. But well, other groups could be, this. what about the disabled people? Shall I, they included as well? Yeah. To enjoy the, the benefit of the information society? Disabled people, um, housewife, elderly people, um, which other group? Uneducated. Uneducated, unemployed. yeah. Unemployed people, jobless, homeless, even, and other groups. <coughs> so, uh, government awareness about the necessity to include all citizens actively in the full benefit of the information society. It is very important also because it's not only to to want to include that, also the government has to take part of this uh, of those projects to include people because they have a power of course. So they need to to be awareness <coughs> about the necessity to include people. Overcoming social, cultural and geographical difference. Other group that we forgot and it's good to remark is um, any minorities, immigrants, when they move to another country and they don't know the language and they have to integrate with the society. Uh, overcoming social, cultural and geographical difference, ensuring equal opportunities for everybody. Remove access barrier to the electronic information. So, more or less that is the, now you have an idea the what means uh, inclusion now. Well, uh, how has the inclusion been addressed in the last decade in Europe? Uh, I will present uh, just uh, I will present to you just four big initiatives called uh, EU Europe 2002 Action Plan and Information Society for All. EU Europe 2005 a new stage for increasing e inclusion through Europe. <coughs> Uh, I 2010 initiative of inclusion to be part of the information society, and the last one and the current one is a, a bit one project, E Euro 2020, the digital agenda for Europe. This is very very huge very big project, but in 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 one part of this uh, project is included the digital agenda for Europe. So the first one. Uh, this action plan, I mean, uh, EU Euro 2002, was created to increase internet connectivity in Europe and encourage internet users. It was, you see, it was uh, in 2000, 
early in the 2000s, 2001 more or less, and it was to bring internet as much I, as they can to all uh, houses throughout Europe. And the, the main goal was to increase the internet connectivity in the uh, individual uh, people in the houses. This action plan focused mainly on employing the advantage provided by the internet. It included 64 uh, targets which were grouped according to three key priorities. Uh, those uh, objectives were accomplished before finishing, uh, before finish 2001, it was in December 2001, it was accomplished everything. So the main uh, priority were group in a cheaper, faster and secure internet. Investing in people <coughs> and skill, I highlight that because for us it's the most important to, to talk a little bit in this presentation because it's related with the skills and people and stimulate the use of internet. I'm going too fast? It's no. okay? Can you follow me? It's okay. Okay, thank you. Well, here is just to see, uh, just uh, check mail about uh, every. Um, you can read uh, a cheaper, faster, and secure internet, a faster internet to res uh, for researchers and uh, students, secure uh, network and smart car. Because in, in the very beginning, in this project, they try in Europe, they try to be uh, the most efficient and fast uh, network in their world. It was the main object of uh, objective of the Europe in that time. And they try to expand to and cover all the schools, the um, university, which uh, to provide it with the internet access at least. So uh, next um, point is investing in people and a skill. Euro uh, it was a project focused on European youth into the digital age, working in the knowledge-based economy, participation for all in the knowledge-based economy all everybody as we were talking before and simulate the use of internet how accelerating e-commerce e-government electronic access to public services health uh, online european digital content and <coughs> well. so uh, one of, of the priorities priorities of uh, e europe 2002 was uh, to ensure that people have their widest possible access to ICT, more specifically, they were focused on disabled people uh, as, as well uh, other group which uh, were in risk of social inclusion. But how they try to minimize this kind of those uh, problems? It's having a more uh, effective coordination at the European level of policy in order to reduce the info exclusion, adopting the Web uh, Accessibility Initiative guidelines for public access. <coughs> in, that, in, in this case, it was uh, related to all um, administration websites. Try to be accessible for everybody, disabled people with everybody. So. And they try to implement in all the um, European <coughs> member states. Reviewing relevant legislation and standard to ensure conformity with accessibility principles. Setting up a PIAPS. It means, um, any of you know what does it mean? That's a public internet access point. So uh, setting up <coughs> public internet access point and establish multimedia tele centers in all communities throughout Europe. <coughs> and the last uh, goal was uh, achieve significant reduction in internet tariff towards uh, the lowest level in the world. They tried to do it because internet in the very beginning of the 20s uh, 2000, sorry, 2000s, 
it was uh, a bit expensive and they tried to, to be more accessible to everybody in dropping the, the tariff to the people. So, why, uh, what they got, they achieved in, after finishing this program? Firstly, internet penetration in home has doubled. Internet access price were down. Almost all companies and school were connected by 2002. Europe has for uh, fast, fastest, fastest, thank you, fastest, thank you very much. Um, prestige, uh, but wrong uh, network now. E-commerce legal framework largely in place. More government service available online. A smart card infrastructure is emerging, was emerging in that time also, and web accessibility guidelines, guidelines were adopted and recommended in all member states. So, uh, the next project, EURO 2005, a new stage for increasing e-inclusion throughout Europe. It was a continuation the previous one. So this second phase of Europe focused more on exploiting uh, broadband technology to deliver online services in both in the public and private sector. Because before they tried to to offer uh, internet to everybody to expand it, and now they want in their policies is to to focus on people to ex to exploit it to use it in the benefit of. Uh, then, so, in other words, in Europe 2005, online to stimulate secure services, applications, and content based on a wide led, available brand broadband infrastructure. So, main objective of this action plan were to provide a, a dynam dynamic e business environment for private investment and for the creation of new jobs. To boost, to boost the productivity, offering a more secure information infrastructure. <coughs> to modernize party services, e-government, e-learning, e-health. To give everyone the opportunity to participate in the global information society. Widespread availability of broadband access at competitive prices, benchmarking, and the dissemination of good practices. So, during, during this uh, action plan, the project uh, include inclusion at EU, strengthening inclusion and e accessibility across Europe, have a crucial importance because it focused on those um, objectives, was to identify new and innovative <coughs> policies, approaches, and measures that accelerate progress towards e-inclusion and e-accessibility in the context of a e Euro 2005 action plan and roadmap. And the second one was to establish a sustainable framework for continued scientific research and user input policy formulation. Who were the target for this program? Mainly people with sensory or physical disabilities, housewives, older people, those who have only a basic education, jobless, ethnic minorities, and people outside cities. Here we can see briefly about um, what Sprint uh, brought uh, EU Euro 2005. It was a proposal to member states to take some far-reaching commitments. It was uh, an invitation to the private sector to work with the Commission and member states to realize the EU Europe objective. However, one lesson learned from E-Europe 2002, the previous uh, strategy, 
was that it, it was useful to review action during the course of the action plan. And this use was especially important because during this project, during this program, uh, 10 new uh, member states became uh, part of the European Union at Slovakia and other new, another <coughs> nine uh, countries. And they have to be adopted to, to the rules of the European Union. So the new step was a, a 2010 initiative on e-inclusion to be part of the information society. This project represented a continuity of uh, E-Europe 2002 and 2005. It put a special attention in e inclusion process as a key fa fa uh, factor for economic and social progress. It focused on encouraging the growth and uh, growth and employment. In the very beginning, we have to think about that because it was uh, created in order to increase the employment, but in that time also ha what happened in Europe in to, uh, around 2008, not only in Europe, you know, over the world. What social or economical things happened in Europe in that time? Economical crisis. Economical crisis, so it was uh, good to readapt that because uh, the crisis started in 2008 and many member states took uh, some measures to overcome that so for the beginning of uh, for, uh, from the beginning i 2010 focused on the e inclusion issues the main of this initiative was to bridge the gap between those who have and those who have not access to the information society by addressing issues uh, such as um, equal opportunities, ICT skills, and rational disparity in Europe in terms of internet access. Because also, of course, in all regions of Europe, the, the level is not the same. So in some regions, uh, were uh, a bit different according to the access uh, to the internet. So, this action plan was the EU policy framework from the Information Society and media from 2005-2009. It promoted the positive contribution to, uh, that ICT can make to the economy, society and personal quality of life. And it's important to remark also that in 2008 uh, the Europeana was born, uh, was created. And you know what is Europeana? Beautiful. So, and the last one is uh, the last um, <coughs> initiative, which is an uh, ongoing project. It's uh, e Europe 2020, <coughs> the digital agenda for Europe. It's cool. The digital agenda for Europe was created on the e Europe 2020. This program is linked with e inclusion and involves all member states. It aims to ensure a very fast internet access that will help citizens to be, learn, create, socialize, and interact online. It's not only to, to know, because actually now uh, the society has been developing and most of the people use internet uh, to, to buy things, to to their everyday life, so you can do it. And now this to to increase people, to encourage people to do that, to use more often internet and those kind of things. Nowadays, using the internet has become an integral part of daily life of every citizen. However, according to the European Commission in 2010, more than 150 million Europeans it's about 30% uh, of the entire popul uh, Euro population have never used the internet yet. Nevertheless, um, according to International Communication Union in 2011, only 35 
percent of the world population has access to internet. And also I want to share with you some um, figures, statistics, which I found uh, from the one uh, website from the US. They say that um, internet users in 2005 uh, are 7 billion. Internet, uh, it's a world the world population is about 7 billion, but internet user is 35% the world population. Not internet users, 65% user in developing countries. No, in, de in developed countries, I mean Europe, the US, Japan, Australia, it's a uh, only 13% of the population, world population and user in developing uh, in develop, developing countries uh, just uh, 22%. <coughs> a clear target uh, the European digital agenda is to bring internet connection of 30 megabytes um, per second. Yeah, yeah or above it available to all Europeans by 2020 and the possibility of, for half of the household to subscribe to connection. So, so you can read there. So this is a more or less uh, that I bring you, brought you uh, related to the e inclusion policies. It's just briefly because the European Union has taken a lot of projects, a lot of things through uh, every member state and the European Union itself. But it's, I just wanted to show you a, a part of that. Now, uh, the second part of my presentation is related to public library in the information society. In this topic, uh, some definitions uh, of public library uh, are given. Some inclusion projects developed uh, over Europe involving public library are mentioned as well. And I know more or less everybody knows who uh, was is a public library, but can you tell me what is it, a public library? A library which offers uh, access for the majority of the population. Yep. Everyone has a registration. Perfect. Beautiful. Other things to add? This is a public library for you. The concept. Well, through the history, several definitions of public libraries have been given, <coughs> but all of them agreed about its crucial role in the society. For instance, that person, the author, Matt Colvin, in, 2000, in 1956, he wrote, he wrote, a public library is provided by the local authorities. The town or county council entry or mostly at its own expenses, governed and administered by the authority or a commu committee. Normally they are free or any of any charges for all the people who live close uh, to that community. Another author said that a uh, public library is a center of communal, uh, communal study and information bureau, bureau. A continuation uh, is like a continuation of a school and a training school for democracy. IFLA, IFLA International Federation of Library Association and Institution, defines public library as more general concept. They say that uh, they are public, uh, they are institutions that serve the whole community in the context of information society and ensure free and equal access to information at the local level. It also includes mobile libraries. Those other uh, authors, they say that library that are provided through public funding or public use are the public good 
are public libraries. UNESCO and IFLA uh, they define in the manifesto of public library as uh, the local gateway gateway to knowledge provides the, a basic condition of learning lifelong learning independent decision making and a cultural development of the individual and social group and a living force for education culture and information as and as an essential agent for foresting of peace and spiritual welfare through the means of men and women. So I will comment to you briefly just uh, four projects which uh, were taken throughout Europe in the last two decades. Decades. So one of them was called Dira, is distant education in rural area via libraries. It was implemented in uh, the late 90s and aimed to encourage public libraries to play an important role transferring information, knowledge and education to users with difficulty following normal courses of studies. Uh, those who live in rural areas and they can, uh, unemployed, elderly and disabled people who can't uh, normally attend university, college, or other kind of uh, schools. It was developed for three, uh, four countries, four or five countries: Austria, Ireland, Spain, Sweden, and UK. Another project was uh, PLAEA, our oh, Public Library and Independent Learners, was a project which ran between 1994 in 1996 and aimed to improve the professional expertise and to raise the level of competence of public library staff as regard its abilities, skills um, to apply <coughs> and exploit new technology and public library settings in order to facilitate course eff effective access to customer to appropriate information and study support. Another project, Hercule, Heritage and Culture Through Libraries in Europe, focused on the young European citizens as information consumers and producers. It generates a website for school children as a library users. This uh, website contains signposts to learning resources linked to a school curriculum validated by teacher and made by librarians. Publica, Public Libraries Concern Action. It started in January 1997 and finishes in December 2000. It focused on support, development and enhancement of public library services uh, through the uh, European Union in that time were uh, 15 countries. Annexation of the project, this project was Publica CEE, um, covered the 10 candidates, uh, new countries, European countries which entered in 2000, which joined in 2004. So this is briefly uh, some project because there are many in many countries which were running in during the last uh, year, but if I comment over then it would be very huge in my presentation and I want just to talk about it, focus me now in the, my practical experience in Estonia because I was uh, living there and studying there and I write uh, my thesis there, so I have the chance to, to know a bit uh, better that uh, reality. Estonian public uh, libraries into information society. Uh, since 1995, Estonia. I don't know uh, if you know what you know about Estonia. Do you have uh, you, have you been there? Any of you? Do you, Do you have any information about that country? How many people here use a Skype? You don't use a Skype? How many? Please. Everyone, or most of the people, right? Well, they, do you know where it was uh, born? What, what it was created? The sky was great in Estonia. Yeah. 
and many other things. Uh, you know that Estonia is the first country, was the first country in Europe to include in their constitution, in Europe, in one of the, in the world, to include in their constitution uh, the internet access to every citizen as a human right. Well, Estonia was. Estonia also was the first country which uh, implemented the electronic voting in, for all their citizens and many, many other things. It was a re it's a really con a leading country in terms of information and communication technologies. So there, since 1995, uh, sorry, I didn't tell you, I know, I'm sure that most of you for, uh, knows for geography that Estonia is a Baltic country which is in the north of uh, Europe, is close to, has border with uh, Latvia, Russian, and sea border with uh, Finland. It is a Baltic state, and before was a uh, uh, Soviet Union Republic, but right now it's part of European Union, <coughs> NATO, um, United Nations, and other international organization. Since 1995, Estonia has participated in several international projects concerning to public libraries. Some of them have uh, already mentioned it before, like a Publica and Hercule, amongst others. PLGP, for example, was another project which Estonia was involved. Public Library Development Project. Uh, Excel, it was other, uh, other project which Estonia was involved with other countries like Poland, Hungary, like uh, Livecon 2000 and CCUP were other projects that are key inclusion. But I want to talk about uh, some internal projects that Estonia has uh, accomplished. In that case, it's uh, some of the most important projects in the recent times in Estonia have been launched by Look at World Foundation. This is a a non-profit organization which uh, is created for the most uh, influential uh, Estonian companies and has a, a good uh, influence in the society and in all the people because they, they, they work, uh, it was created just with the aim to, to push people to use all the technologies in their country. So from 2002 and 2004 more than 100 million participants were trying to use computer and internet. It was in, the co in collaboration with other institutions and public library such as uh, Tallinn Central Library. Tallinn Central Library is the main uh, public library in Estonia. It is in the capital, it's uh, located in the capital. Uh, it has uh, um, 17 uh, branch libraries around the capital, and also two mobile uh, libraries, booth libraries. Um, in that period, uh, they have um, set up, they set up um, 442 PAIPS, uh, as I told you, it's a uh, public, public, public who can repeat? Public access internet Points, beautiful, thank you. Um, uh, there are other projects like a computer security project, uh, New Beginnings, Come Along, very, very important project in which uh, I had the opportunity to be involved and it was very important. And training courses for unemployed people and elderly. It's a still running this program since uh, 2009. So this, uh, this uh, program, Computer Security Project, started in May 2006. The objective of this project was to, re to raise internet uh, user awareness about the security and other means uh, of identif authentication in electronic services. Because you know, in Estonia, the ID, electronic ID is uh, a very important thing for all Estonian citizens because with, through that you can do you can access to all uh, electronic uh, processes. You can vote, you can sign a paper. If you don't want to sign a paper like handwritten, you can do it with it with your email and with your ID card and card reader. 
also in Estonia you can in, in, in your ID you can include bank account you can include a uh, public transport but another thing that I want to share with you is in Estonia you know that uh, do you know that Estonia is uh, the public transport is for free in Tallinn it works for free it's just to encourage people don't use the the um, their cars their own car to to protect the environment and it's for free so you you just paid a magnetic car for two euros and you can use all the time and it works apparently it works <coughs> um, the thing well the next project new beginnings from 2009 2011 was this program this program was a uh, volunteer fixing up a uh, used computer it was uh, many people who are skilled they know uh, about um, information technology they regularly go to the libraries just to stay there one morning or afternoon or some hours to help people to to clean their computer for example if you want to put uh, antivirus or things like that you can go to the library and you will find there a guy or girl who is uh, able to help you in doing that it was a project for free for the community um, at Tallinn Central Library in 2009 250, 250 computers were clean and 200 in 2011 Come along, very important project. This project uh, aimed to, to teach people how to use the computer, how to use the ID card in all electronic um, operations like banking, uh, to buy tickets, to, to access to e-health, e-health also, and um, to everything because uh, in Estonia, for example, or the, another uh, example that I can give you, if you want, to, if you go to the doctor, if the doctor gives you a prescription, it is not like a paper. You don't need a paper anymore. They can write it, and you can go to whatever, uh, whenever you want, what, uh, whatever you want, uh, any pharmacy in your town or in the other part of the country. At, at the same moment, you uh, just you give the, your ID and all the information. They, they will receive at the moment, okay, you are needing this um, medicine and they give you, you don't need a paper, just you go to the doctor, they give you, they send you the prescription and in all the system, in the pharmacies, it will be circulated, so you only give your ID and it works, it's, so it's very good for that. Uh, it's, here, uh, it's implemented here also the ID system, you work uh, quite often with your ID card, many operations. No, it's... It's under the yellow. It's ongoing. Which kind of um, e process or e activity you can do it with your ID here? Uh, we can buy public transport, public transport license. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, okay. <laughs> no, I mean, well, this project was very important because um, um, uh, it was to, it was a, poli um, a policy to expand all the e services to sp uh, in Estonia to all the country. You know, in every place in Estonia, you can uh, access internet, even if you are in the forest. There you, you can access internet because it is by, by law, it is uh, a right of all Estonian citizens. And they try, but it's not to, to access because you know, now all the uh, young generation they know how to use a computer, how to use the iPhone, and everything. But all gener generation, what happened with them? Who, who have to teach them? Because maybe you have at home uh, your parents, they don't know how to use that. But sometimes the uh, young people, they are too busy or they are in, in your things, they are not patient to teach people, teach their father, uh, their parents how to use that. But public library, they do it. And you know, most and most uh, 
you know, it's very often that uh, you guys, young people, students, you go abroad to, stu uh, to study in other countries and you want to, to keep in touch with your parents, right? So you have to use uh, the way that you spend less money. What is one of them? Skype. So in the libraries also, uh, librarians teach um, elderly people to, how to open an uh, email account, how to use Skype in order to, to keep in touch with their um, grandson or sons who are abroad and many other things. How to use the ID card also because you know uh, for you it's quite easy to use the ID card uh, doing banking operation but for other people it's a bit more difficult and unfortunately they didn't have, uh, many of them they don't have um, skills how to do it or they, are, they don't They don't have also um, a degree background how to to do that, and they do need uh, they they need to go to any place to to learn that, and the public library is the best uh, place to do it. So, uh, trying causes for unemployed and elderly people. It was another project. Which kind of training courses uh, were taught in Estonia? Uh, the first one uh, was for unemployed people, no, elderly people, so uh, computers. Courses for beginners, they teach for individual people uh, one by one, or they have also implemented for groups of people. Um, they call this program 50 plus less for beginners. And they teach them, librarians, I mean, how to create and use uh, an inter uh, email account, uh, how to use uh, M, yes, M, S, M, and, or Skype, f uh, to find newspaper on the internet, use the catalog. In Estonia, it's, uh, they have a national, they have a catalog which works in all the national not all the national, it's uh, uh, controlled by the National Library, but all the collections from all public libraries of the country are included in this catalog, so it's quite useful because since home you can check the catalog and you, you know where is a book in which library you can go to. Uh, the ID card in order to make electronic operations, access to the home page of the local governments, pension policy, unit, banks, among others. Another very important course uh, which uh, um, Estonian librarians, public librarians, to, uh, are taking still right now is a training courses for job seekers. You know, uh, now everything in Estonia goes to online system. Even if you want to apply for a job, it's not like uh, maybe 20 years ago People call or send an email, or it's just like that. You go to the employer and you say, okay, I want to work here, or maybe a friend of you tell, uh, tells you, uh, in my organization are needing a person who is able to work as a gardener. So it's uh, just... Uh, Through media, newspapers or... Newspaper or just uh, to inform between people, no? But right now in Estonia, everything it's through the internet. If you want to apply for a job, you have to go there, to internet, even for the basic professions. Because if you are a, if you work in a bakery, you, why you, you need to know the skills in, with internet? No, uh, you, don't, you don't need how to use a inter, um, I mean, a computer skill because in your day, uh, work day, you don't need, you will not use that but to apply you have to and what happens uh, when crisis came in in Estonia in 2008 many people lost uh, their job and they were working for many uh, for companies uh, maybe for more than 15 years or 20 years and you can imagine if you are working for one company 20 years and when you start to work internet and this kind of thing it doesn't it didn't exist and now when uh, the crisis uh, came, uh, you feel that the uh, society has changed. You, you don't have the uh, tools 
to, to face to the new environment, but you have to learn because you have to work, you have to, to earn money to support your family and what you can do. And what happened? In Estonia, uh, the population of uh, Tallinn, mostly all the country, in Baltic countries is a reality, but uh, in, in the capital, the uh, Russian population is more or less half of the population of the country. So many people, they speak only Russian. So uh, they are not able to read Estonian, and they were living in, in that country where they didn't need uh, Estonian to survive, because when Soviet Union uh, when uh, before Soviet Union in Estonia and all Baltic countries they spoke uh, uh, Russian language so it was very important language there so they they didn't need really uh, Estonian to to live to work and even their young generation if you are a Russian family you teach you you speak with your sons in Russian of course and you can choose you could choose to send them to Russian school in Estonia. But what happened? Now Estonia is part of the European Union. They have their own uh, language. And if you live in Estonia, you have to learn, you have to speak Estonian. And you know, Russians who were working in, in a company just talking Russian, because in the street, you can speak, if you speak Russian, you don't need Estonia, really. Because Estonian, they speak Russian, and Russian is very common language there. But for official things, you need to learn Russian, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. And what happened with that kind of people? They need to know, to know Estonian to, to submit a CV, to go to, uh, to inter uh, job inter uh, interview as well. So it was a bit uh, difficult at that point. But well, if you want to know more about this topic, you can read uh, my book, which I'll publish. I will keep here, uh, I will leave here to the professor copy for the department. And, uh, well, going back to, to trying courses, what a librarian did or are doing. They teach a um, job seeker how to, to create a CV. They, uh, they teach uh, them how uh, looking for a job in Estonia or abroad because, uh, you know, uh, now with the European Union, if you are a European citizen, you can work in any other uh, European state member. And Finland is a country which is close to Estonia and it's a very, very good country. Very good, uh, they have very quality of life and many Estonians go to, to Finland also to work and they speak also Finnish. And uh, they teach uh, librarian to job seeker how to create CV looking for a job in Estonia or abroad, to prepare for a job interview, filling application form via web because now everything is through the internet, motivation letter and so on. So another program was a training 100 unemployed people to work as customer support specialist at IT help, help tech. Desk. It was another good uh, thing because they were training on employed people who were qualified in order to get a job and to help other people. It was a, a thing to overcome the, um, the barriers to the inclusion, uh, to the crisis, I mean. Training long-term unemployed to work as customer support specialist by IT training and work practice Training 55 long-term unemployed to work as customer support specialist at IT help desk. So, conclusion. Now, briefly, I will give so you some conclusion about um, this presentation. The first one is the inclusion is becoming increasingly an important issue, issue to the EU and all uh, member states. Thus, several initiatives have been in, uh, launched uh, with uh, the aim to include more people at the information society. Before to continue giving the conclusion, I want to think uh, to share with you also some uh, example of the e inclusion that uh, are doing uh, are happening in other countries. For example, in Ireland, uh, they teach uh, homeless people 
you know what it means, homeless people? People who live in the street, who doesn't, yes. homeless, homeless, homeless. Oh, sorry for my pronunciation. <laughs> Well, they uh, teach them where to find places uh, to eat, like a charity places, um, to have a place where to have a shower, uh, to send test measures to use their mobile, and it's very good, very interesting initiative also to re to read newspaper. In other uh, towns uh, in Norway, the librarian, te public librarian, they teach farmers and fishers. Fish, men uh, to use internet to better promote their products and uh, to access uh, the market price. Also, quite interesting uh, things. No, while you are uh, researching more in this topic, you, you are discovering that many things are happening in many countries, in many places, with uh, different uh, target group. So, next um, conclusion is the inclusion always, always appears linked to ICT. Without ICT, we can't include anybody. And it's content four of trying to make inclusive society for everyone, especially for those who could be socially excluded. Governments. It is very important because to be included is not only to want. It's also you have to. People have to. To have the support of important uh, authorities, so the awareness of the government is important for the inclusion programs. Because also it's improved the quality of life of everyone, of the citizens. Public libraries is another conclusion as a focal point for the provision of information services to the community are being a natural place to implement different e-inclusion initiatives over Europe. You can see how important are the public libraries and in many countries they don't know how uh, it how can be important. It. Okay. Because uh, also public libraries for free, people who doesn't have resources, who doesn't have money, they, who don't have money, they can go to the library for free and use the computers, use all the information that they have available for them. And one uh, important date uh, figures here is that in the U.S., many people who applied for a job in Just uh, to say something, this in, uh, as reported in 2010, <coughs> an estimate of 30 million people have used library computers in the, an internet access to search employment. In the US, 30 million of people were uh, using the computers in the public library looking for a job, and uh, 3.7 million people actually being hired but for a position they apply through libraries computer so you can see how can useful could be many people apply for a job uh, through the libraries and they got a job 3.7 uh, millions in the u.s uh, public library support inclusion by providing free access and training to their communities and the last conclusion is estonia is, uh, and its public uh, library system stand up as a leading country in terms of digital inclusion within the European Union area. So it's all. This is uh, the book which I have uh, published uh, related to inclusion matters. You can, from the uh, librarian point of view, if you want to read a little bit about that, you can be you can go deeper about this topic, interesting topic, because I just only summarized a few questions, few things and regarding that. Here you is can a buy through Amazon. Well, it's uh, available in Amazon also. It's a bit expensive, so I have also the the PDF five. If you need, if you want to read it. Well, thank you for your attention. Thank you.
Thank you very much, and I think that now it's time for, for questions. I am I'm not sure whether <laughs> students will have some questions, but this is the reason why I would like to start with my questions. Okay. The first one is uh, about the, the first part of your presentation. You were speaking about European programs and initiatives towards cheaper and faster internet. Uh, I am skeptical whether the role of European institutions and governments is so important. I think that open market is much more important than these initiatives. I'm not sure I, uh, this is only my opinion. You know that open market do much more for cheaper and faster internet than European, European initiatives. Yes, but Europe, uh, open market is also regulated by the European Union initiative. So they send they, the European Union they promote uh, some general uh, initiative that every country uh, every country has to accomplish that and when i when i was talking about the uh, faster and cheaper um, um, initiative and uh, internet so, sorry access it was because in the very beginning internet was uh, quite expensive because then the, the, the open yes. market wasn't it wasn't really open, just few uh, people had opportunity to have internet at home. Right now, there are many companies which uh, are offering internet in different prices. And uh, in the very beginning, do you remember the connection, the speed connection? It was uh, lower than right now, because they are investing on that. And it was the, it was the aim in 2002, but from 2002 and today, nowadays, it had uh, increasing and developing in that way. because I I don't I don't remember whether in this country was any governmental initiative towards support for providers like tax support or any other support we were waiting for the third pro, uh, mobile e mobile provider I think five years because the governmental bureaucracy still have the problem to open the market for the third uh, mobile provider. I think that government do much against really? development of fast mobile services and. But sometimes it uh, it depends also on the every country because, for example, I was living in Estonia. Estonia is a country which entered in the European Union, like uh, Slovakia, in two thousand and four. Um, of course, it's a small country, so you can develop things quite quickly, very quick. But uh, when I moved from Estonia to Belgium, which is a, a founder um, European country, I thought that, okay, Be Belgium will be a very, very developed country in terms of information and communication technology. But no, it is not. Because when uh, I was in, in Estonia, you can access internet in everywhere, in every bar, in every place. It is like a, to, in, a necessity in, uh, in the first grade of the pyramids. But in Belgium, it is not like that. And apparently, all the deci important decisions are taken in Belgium. And Belgium is a country which is a founder of the European Union. But it depends also the the country, how they um, applied or implement the roles and uh, my personal experience I don't know very much about this country but uh, I'm happy because in many places uh, I mean bars pubs you can access internet easily because here we are fighting quite often in, in, if you go to any place and so it means that in terms of uh, information in, to access to internet you have I'm very good actually I don't know if um, if people know how to use it, to use it if mm, they take advantage of that, as they should do it, but uh, I think you are in, in the right way as well. You can, you can tell me, because you are, it is your country, and I would like to, to learn things also about your country. Well, you can tell me about the things here. 
But you mean that in, in public, public for in buses, you can access to internet yeah. also? Uh, Very good. In some of them, not all of them, but <laughs> some of them. No, they got accepted. And do you know any public access internet uh, point here? Uh, you can connect on some for squares, mm -hmm. but the internet isn't secure. What do you mean that isn't secure? It can be. Direct, it can be And who is uh, who is who lives in is from a you know from a rural area here? Anybody live in outside the city, Bratislava? I mean, in a small town or in a village or a village? How works that? Yeah. yeah. But in the bars, pubs, restaurants, you have access? Like here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And also in a small town, but we've got our internet connection in our main square. And what about the public library in your town, for example? Have you been in visit? Um, um, regular citizens, they go there to, to use the services of a public library. I mean, if uh, people who live in that area, if they go often to the library to use the, the ser their services, I mean, no. no? Do you know any program, uh, inclusion program that is uh, running here in, in Slovakia, like similar? To any of those? They are not seniors. I, no, but, <laughs> <laughs> but about their parents, all of them have parents now. Because I know here there is also some kind of uh, inclusion programs. For example, e-health. e-health? E e yeah. Info page, there is one large project. Okay. It's, for, it's for schools, for the whole system of schools, yeah. not only for some special schools. In, in Estonia, they have also um, a similar project uh, they, they call ICUM. Uh, this project uh, helps parents and children to, to be online to know all the, the things through the, the it's happened at the school. Parents, for example, they can access uh, the grades of their children, their homework, uh, if they have a meeting in the, uh, at a school, everything they can control through the internet also in Estonia. But I, I want to share with you that here in, Bra in Bratislava, some public libraries, maybe somebody else can tell me to tell a little bit about that. There are some projects running in, in some uh, public library about the uh, uh, inclusion uh, program to help seniors uh, to use the computers and so could you English no? <laughs> uh, 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 Slovenská asociácia fyzikníc to neskoordinovala, pretože každý si to chce robiť po svojom. 
tak aj tá otázka, že či je to bezplatné alebo platené, uh, tak nedá sa na nej jednoznačne odpovedať. V Bratislave väčšina týchto kurzov uh, je platený. No, <laughs> yes, ale whether those courses for seniors are free or whether they have to pay something. Yeah. Yeah. Ale, uh, ale to platenie, to sú symbolické sumy. Uh, Stanovská knižnica už to je 10 eur za týždňový kurz a v tom uh, už poskytujú aj ročné členské a hodnú 2 eur. But the, the good thing is, uh, is, f is for free in Estonia and librarian they, they teach also uh, because they want to help the, their community but they don't receive money, extra money for teaching those kind of courses. And they they can teach individually to every person and also uh, in group. Yeah. I have a, another principal question. Yeah. <laughs> Advertising break. I just want to make sure that the students who are going to be in April will be able to go to the lecture. So, please come to me. I will explain everything. But not all. Okay, let's go back to the principal question. When we are speaking about public access in public library, uh, public access internet points in public libraries, and all these stuff like jobless people and finding jobs in libraries, etc., everything also services, these e-services for seniors, everything is inside that system of, I would call it, social services, not cultural services. You know how I mean it? Uh, what about the productive middle classes in public libraries? All of these services are for those who are, from that point of view or that point of view, handicapped. Mm -hmm. either physical or ethnic handicap or age handicap or something like that. But what about the middle classes who are, unfortunately, who are not handicapped? Well, uh, those, <laughs> those, those project, uh, projects are for everybody. They yes, don't say? Yes, I, I see, but this generation, they have their internet point in their cellular mobile phones. That is their uh, public point is inside their mobile phones. But what public libraries can do for, for them in this e-inclusion? They are already included. So <laughs> public library can ask them to help others. Because it's, last, uh, it's like the, a, program, a project which I show you. Uh, some people who know uh, who know uh, about technology, they go to the library for free to install <laughs> programs to the people who don't know uh, how to to manage that, uh, to put an antivirus. So because that society they help each other. So it's a good point. But what happened? Uh, the difference. My study uh, was in all public library in Tallinn, but all the public library was. Uh, gave me different uh, results because it's not the same the community that you have in in a um, neighborhood which everybody is a uh, immigrant than uh, the result that you have in, in, a, in for example in a neighborhood which is close to which is full of embassies and people who has very good style of life so many of them go the, in, 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 my, in my experience there, when I analyze, interview the librarians there, in some library it was quite easy because uh, people uh, who go to the library in the rich area, they go themselves uh, to the catalog, they, they, have, they know how to do it. But all the other people who are immigrants from, they have low uh, incomes, it's more difficult because they have 
to teach, uh, like what I have to teach since the very beginning, how works everything. So, but I don't know if I answer your question. No, yes, of course you <laughs> you answered the question. I, I spoke with Slovak librarians <coughs> about these social services of public libraries, and finally we we said that for public libraries it would be much more better to be inside the system of uh, governmental bureaucracy to be under Ministry of Social Services than yeah. under Ministry of Culture because Ministry of Culture is very poor and Ministry yeah. of so Social Services is relatively rich. But I think it depends on every country because for example Estonia it depends uh, the public library system depends on uh, ministry of culture. Uh, normally, the culture is a um, ministry which don't have it. Too, um, too much money yeah. to invest in people. But uh, the Ministry of Health Work, uh, yes. they are connected also with the public library because they send uh, people who, who go there to looking for a job, they uh, tell to people that in public library they can learn to to use a computer, they can apply for a job, the librarian can help them too, so they are connected. And uh, they send also people who are qualified to the public library to train them, uh, to do a training to, to cover some vacancies related to this kind of job, to help other people. It's just, mm -hmm. So it's like a chain, but uh, everybody, everybody uh, helps themselves there. But it depends on the countries, the, po the policy for the, every country. And also, you know, for uh, the project Come Alone is uh, look at World Foundation. This is a private foundation, and they uh, sponsor all those causes. For the the most uh, important, the most influential uh, private companies in Estonia, they give money to support these kind of things, and they are private institutions, but they work uh, with the government, with the public institutions, but it's just a... Uh, but European Union don't say, you have to do it that, no. Normally, European Union uh, launch, um, launches a directive, a guideline general, but every country apply as they can, as they want us. Any other question? Comment, suggestions? I was just wondering, uh, I don't know if it's good, but um, what about well, if everyone has a right to access to the internet mm -hmm. and to have equal access, um, do you know something about prisoners, if they are part of information society? Mm -hmm. Yes, they are, because even in the prison they have uh, computers. I'm talking about in, in Estonia, this uh, program uh, doesn't co doesn't co uh, cover the um, prisoners because it's just a public library. But some pro public library they have also projects with prisons. Mm -hmm. They send people there to to teach uh, how to use the computer, and they, they have this kind of program. And also in many places, villages where they don't have uh, libraries, mm -hmm. they have a bus library which uh, calls the those area to teach people how to use the computers and even handicapped people or uh, I mean disabled people who cannot go to the public library there are some librarians who go there to visit in their house no no I mean it, you can imagine if you are a disabled people who can who are not able to move to the library but you want to be included because it's your right the librarian, you can call to the library, and a, a librarian go to, goes to your house to teach you how to use it. Even that's a kind of a problem uh, there is in Estonia. So, any other question? Okay. Thank there are you. No more question. I would like to say thank you to you. Because it was really very, very impressive. Uh, very, you, you gave us a lot of 
new points of view, new knowledge and uh, new facts, new information. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Next time I would like to share with you if, if uh, Professor Pablo gave me the opportunity to, share, to comment a little bit about the reality in Spain and other country, European country. But it could be maybe next time. Because I hope to come back here to Bratislava and maybe I can... Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome.